do that, you'll have to go all the fucking way back to the Zanzibar building. But if you go back here where the trucks have these conveyor belts, you can use the cardboard box to hop into the truck and it'll transport you to the tower building for a shortcut. Isn't this a lot easier than figuring out where the truck have started to move? Once you're back in the Zanzibar building, head over to the room where you got the red and blue cards. Use the level 9 card on this door to get the green card. As you probably guessed, it combines cards 7 through 9, so now you have to only worry about 3 cards. Head back to the elevator, take it to the 4th floor, and remember to head north on this intersection and follow the path till you get to the cafeteria. Use the red card on this door to get into the freezer, grab the rations, hang out for a bit, smoke a cigarette if you want, and soon enough the brooch will change shape. Now make your way back to the tower building. When you get back to the elevator room, head to the room in the northeast corner and use the green card. It'll take you into this loading room. Use the box trick again to ship yourself to nearby the detention center. Head back to Dr. Marv's room and use the key to open up the locker. There's nothing in the room but a hole in the wall near the floor. Crawl through it into a rat's nest. They're apparently poisonous hamster rat hybrids and they kill you with just one bite instantly. But you can lure them out with cheese, so equip a B3 ration which contains cheese and wait for them to come out. Shoot them down one by one and then crawl through to get the cartridge. On the way out, Petrovich, who amazingly is still alive, utters out that he will use Metal Gear deliberately, referring to Grey Fox I'm sure, and tells you to go after its weak armored legs with grenades if you want to destroy it. The trap door opens up underneath you, and Grey Fox can be heard, saying that you will never destroy this Metal Gear, and dares you to walk through the door in front of you. First use the red card on this door to get some grenades, and then the red card again down here to get a ration, some ammo packs, and another ration down here. Go back and use the blue card on the main door, and you'll be confronted by Metal Gear, controlled by Grey Fox. Metal Gear will walk straight ahead and back up, going back and forth while firing. Its attacks consist of a multiple direction gun and missiles. Get on the side of it and follow it up, firing grenades when it's not attacking. Once it starts firing the bullets, get the hell out of the way. The missiles are actually easier to avoid and once they level off, they'll continue in that direction. So if you get a clear shot, take it. Once you destroy Metal Gear, Grey Fox will take the cartridge from you, set you on fire, and then run off leaving you to burn to death. What a prick. You and your equipment are burning up, so go into your inventory and get rid of everything. Then head down and this door will open up for you. Grey Fox is waiting for you and challenges you to a fist fight, stating that he always wanted to settle the rivalry that they had in Foxhound. Just as the fight begins, you'll get a call from Foxhound's mercenary expert George Kessler, who mentions how Grey Fox was an excellent soldier, that his real name is Frank Yeager, and he was the one who was dating Natasha back when they were trying to gain citizenship in the States. Interesting how he was the one that did her in. Kessler tells you if you defeat Grey Fox, then you're the best mercenary in the world. No pressure. So now the legendary battle between Solid Snake and Grey Fox commences. The perimeter of the room is covered in landmines. They won't hurt him, but they will hurt you, so keep away from the walls. He runs around like a maniac. Try to keep your distance, and when he changes direction downward, line yourself up with a punch and then run away. Sometimes you might be able to get a few shots in a row if he runs back and forth like this, but usually you want to get away from him. It's not easy, and it's a strain on the fingers since you're reacting quick and trying to avoid the walls at the same time. Eventually, you'll take him down, and in his dying breath, he'll explain to you that this was nothing personal. He just owed Big Boss, who saved his life twice long before he joined Foxhound. He says that he hates war, but needs it because he can't function in a normal society, but feels right at home on the battlefield. Fox wishes Snake well and tells him not to trust his fans' expectations, revealing that he was the fan of yours making those calls to assist you. Snake assures him that Natasha is waiting for him on the other side. Fox then explodes, which I'm sure is completely disregarded in the game's future story, but anyway. Grab the cartridge and you'll hear a voice calling for you from the other room. Enter the room, and then enter the next room. You'll have a pre-battle conversation with Big Boss. Snake says he's come to free the nightmares from the Outer Heaven incident. Big Boss says that will never work, that they both will remain on the battlefield for the rest of their lives, and that they're needed in war, but back home they're regarded as useless dummies. He says he will free you from your misery, and the final battle begins. Now, you have no weapons, but you're gonna have to be resourceful here. First thing is run like hell. Head east, grab the ration, and continue running away in this direction, grabbing another ration along the way, and be sure to avoid the puddles of acid. Keep going, walk into this room, and grab the ID card 6. Head out, go left, grab another ration along the way, and you'll end up back to where you entered the room, and use card 6 to get in and grab ID card 1. Head back around to the northeast corner, and use card 1 to get in and get card 2. Leave and head west, and use card 2 here. 
crawl under the vent and get card 3. Head back around to the screen you came in and use card 3 on the other door to get card 4. Head right and use card 4 to get in and get a lighter and watch the acid. Head around to the northern part of the room, use card 4 to get in and get card 5. Again, be careful of the acid. Now head to the southwest part of the room, equip a ration to wipe out the acid puddle and use card 5 to get in and get the spray. Now equip the spray and the lighter and guess what? You got yourself a homemade makeshift motherfucking flamethrower. You should have two rations for this, so walk up to Big Boss and lure him over to the screen with the crates. Stand behind it and fire over the crate, hitting him with the flame. Just keep him on the opposite side of you, as he'll have no chance of hurting you. Once you finish him off, he'll be engulfed in flames, screaming, not yet, Snake, as he falls to the ground and explodes. Another detail that will be ignored in the story's future. Head to the northern door, which will open up automatically, and enter. You get snuck up on by a guard, but it turns out it's just Holly in disguise. She gives you a handgun that she grabbed from an enemy, and Snake calls for someone codenamed Charlie to pick him and Holly up at the next pickup point. Equip your gun and head north. You'll run into three soldiers. Kill them and keep running, as more will follow you. Don't stop to turn and shoot unless they get real close, because there will be an infinite number of them, although you do have an infinite amount of ammo. Watch out for the trapdoor here, and grab the ration up in this corner, and quickly turn around to dispose of anyone following you, and continue on. Call for the elevator, and while you wait for it, turn around, firing rapidly to prevent any more enemies from showing up. Once the elevator comes down, hop in, kill whatever guards follow you in, and take the elevator up to the first floor. Grab the ration as soon as you get out, kill the guards that come out, and run down this path. There are some wired traps along the way here, cut them quickly and move your ass, only turning to kill enemies if you get into trouble. Once you get to the dead end, Snake calls Charlie and tells him to move his ass, Christmas will be over soon. He says he's still 10 kilometers away, so hang on. Keep blasting the guards that show up, just don't wander off over here, there's a trap door. Eventually you take them all out, and Snake will run out of ammo. A few guards will hold you at gunpoint, but then Charlie finally shows up from his helicopter and shoots them down. As they load up into the helicopter, Snake asks Holly if they'll make it by Christmas. I guess Snake really has a thing for the holidays. Instead, Holly asks him to dinner, which he agrees since he's sick of the rations. They fly away and the credits roll. After the credits, Campbell congratulates Snake and asks if he'll come back to the old squad. Snake declines, saying his nightmare is over. They take the cartridge and insert it into an MSX to see if it's the genuine copy Mav left behind, and discover that he signed his name on it backwards, proving that it is the real one. Snake disappears from the conversation. Campbell says that Snake's place is no longer here, and Holly gets pissed because Snake bailed out on their dinner appointment. So then the cast of characters is shown, and the game officially ends here. Honestly, this is one of the most underrated games I've ever seen. This was in 1990, so this is a 20 year old game. For the time, the graphics were top notch, the gameplay was ahead of its time, and the story was probably deeper than any other game at this time. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, because that's pretty much how it sounds every time Hideo Kojima releases a game from this franchise. The original Metal Gear broke the mold, but this one took that mold and perfected it. There wouldn't be another game for this franchise for another 8 years when Metal Gear Solid was released but the wait for that one was well worth it. If you like the Metal Gear Solid games but never got a chance to play the original two on the MSX, I highly recommend them. It gives you a huge refresher course on the events that led up to the first Metal Gear Solid game, and it's just a fantastic game overall. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.